Do you ever lift an IC and notice there's a rip pad underneath? Or you split a sandwich board and there's some missing pads you have to restore? Well, good news. There's the Refox soldering lugs. These are pre-made jumpers and pads that make these type of repairs so much easier to deal with. Well, I'm Jesse from VCC Board Repairs. We specialize in micro soldering and data recovery. And in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how to use this on an iPhone 8 Plus with broken Wi-Fi pads, as well as explain some of the other use cases for this type of tool. So if you enjoy this type of content, make sure you smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to the channel. So let's go ahead and get started with the video. So here it is, the Refox soldering lugs. You can see there's six different sizes available. And inside you'll find the sleeve with the sheet of the different soldering lugs. And I'll have this link in the description in case you are interested in purchasing it. But let's go ahead and take a look under the microscope. So let's walk through the different options available here. So this first top row is for Wi-Fi. I use these a lot, there's a lot of iPhones that get Wi-Fi pads that get ripped. So this is a perfect uh, solution for that. I'll actually walk through that real quick after this on how to use it. Then there's some other ones here with the little pad and a jumper wire. Uh, an another bigger one here. These are perfect for sandwich boards. So if you rip a pad on a sandwich board, you can use this to recreate the pad. And then just some more uh, bigger and bigger options. These are pretty good for NAND. So if you rip a pad on NAND on the chip itself or on the board, these would work great. So this is an iPhone 8 Plus that has a broken Wi-Fi pad here. And we're going to use one of the soldering lugs to recreate this pad and fix this board. So first step you got to do is scratch out the trace so we can um, reconnect the broken connection. So the, the pad here is what connects to the chip and it continues through this trace through the rest of the board. So we first have to uh, expose this part of the, the trace here so we can solder onto it. Now be careful not to scratch out the ground layer next to it because then you don't want to solder to that. So I'm using a blade here to scratch it out. Make sure your blade is very sharp, as you can see there. Then using some flux, we're gonna tin, tin this pad or this trace. Some, some flux, some soldering, or soldering iron. Okay, now for the soldering lug, uh, one thing you do have to do is peel off this top layer so you could expose the, the soldering lugs. You'll see what I mean in a second. It makes it a lot easier than trying to pick it out from here. What you do is you peel off this top layer. So you get peel off as much as you can. All right, that should be good. And you can see it's just the, the soldering lug jumper is left behind and it makes it really easy to extract. But before I get started, I do want to add some UV mask here to the surrounding area because there, it looks like there's some ground possibly exposed. So just to be safe, let's just go ahead and Cover that up a little bit. Essentially, I'm going to solder to the little uh, circular part here because that goes straight across to where the pad belongs. So I've added some UV mask there. And then with the laser, UV laser, we're going to cure it. This creates a solid, uh, it turns the liquid into a solid, um, I guess material. I don't know how else to describe it. All right, so we now should be left with only 
the pad here. So then we add some flux. Grab my soldering lug. And then we're going to place it like this. So essentially you want to line it up in the cavity. So when the chip goes on top, it'll line up with the soldering lug. So I'm going to hold it with my tweezers and then use the back of my iron to kind of press down. This essentially feeds the solder that was from the bottom on the board. It feeds it up through the soldering lug and grabs it all as one piece. So this is on real solid right here. And I'm gonna chop off this tail, which you can reuse later, technically, as a jumper, as a regular, you know, jumper wire. Then I'm gonna apply some alcohol here to clean off the flux because we do have to add some additional UV mask here to hold it in place. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I do want to check for shorts. Now on ZXW, this shows as OL. So I'm touching it and in my meter it says OL, so it's not shorted. I mean, this is good. I'm going to add some more UV mask to it. So we can make sure it's solid and not moving around. So I have my the UV mask I use and all my tweezers and all that linked in the description. So what I'm going to do here is apply a thin layer of UV all around it so that when I hit it with the UV light it will solidify it. But also be careful not to put thick layers, make it really thin and kind of spread it around. You don't want to have a thick layer and it creates a obstruction for the chip. So all right, so there you have it. Hit it with the UV light. Make sure not to look at it directly with your eyeballs, because you can damage your eyesight. I'm looking at it through the the camera here so I'm safe. All right, so you want to do about 10 seconds or so of UV light and then check to see if it's solid. It looks pretty solid. So now what I'm going to do is scratch off this top layer. This will expose the copper which will be soldered onto from the chip. You essentially want to Expose just the rectangle part, not the jumper part, not the, the little tail that goes out to where it's soldered onto. Okay, so there you have it. That's what it looks like. Okay, so now I'm ready to place a chip. I already have the chip reballed. I have all the pads here wicked, and we're basically ready to install this. Add some flux. Place the chip in place. Do your best to align it to make sure the right pads get soldered to the right uh, pads on the chip. All right, you can see here the little tail is sticking out. That's fine. Now my trick here is to just kind of visualize uh, like the spacing between the edges to get an idea if you're lined up right. I remember the spacing between between this, between up here, 
where the spacing down here was like this. So I think we should be pretty good. So let's go ahead and heat this onto the board. I'm going to start off with low heat. I'm at 330 Celsius with 35 airflow. I'm just going to go in quick little circles. I don't think this is enough to really melt the solder, but it's mostly to warm up the area and to spread the flux underneath. It might be enough to um, melt it. Let's see what happens. All right, yeah, it looks like it is melting the solder because we can see the flux bubbling. That's usually a sign that this is hot enough to melt the solder on the chip. But it's not, there it goes. I could see it moving. All right, so I saw it move. I'm gonna gently bump the chip to see if it's in place. Doesn't look like it. So what I'm gonna do is turn up my temperature. 365 Celsius with 65 air. I'm just gonna keep going in circles. I think that's soldered on now. I'm gonna bump it. I can see it moving. So I'm going to wait for it to cool down a little bit. And then we'll test to see what happens. So here's a moment of truth. Does it work? Yeah, it does. You can see. Wi-Fi can be enabled, all the Wi-Fi networks on and off. Also to be sure, Bluetooth works as well. You can turn it on and off. There you have it, it's fixed. So there you have it folks, the Refox iron lugs. These are amazing for fixing pads. They're super useful and they're not that expensive. So you can't go wrong with them. Check out the link in the description if you are interested. Plus, let me know in the comments, do you find these useful? Do you plan on getting them? Just wanna hear your feedback. And don't forget to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to the channel if you want to keep seeing more videos like this. And I think that's it for now. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.